today's video we're going to be doing the mathematics paper one um, paper from 2021 it's based on the trial exam so I've never done this paper I'll just show you how I would go about in answering it and I hope this will be helpful for you as well the intent of this video is to show you how to do these questions and to also demonstrate the line of reasoning that should be employed in answering these questions so let's look at 1.1.1 um, On 1.1.1, we are given 4x squared minus 25 is equal to 0. And we are asked to solve for x. So when you solve them for a question like this, you have to look at what it resembles. This expression resembles the form x squared minus a squared, where x is the variable and a is the constant. So this in general is equal to x minus a multiplied by x plus a. In this case, we can clearly see that a, 25 is a and x squared is that x there but then now there's also a 4 here so if there's a 4 here for example here there was a 4 then we would then write 2 and 2 here so we utilize that line of reasoning as a result what we're going to end up having here is this we're going to end up having 2x on this side 2x on this side as well and then because I show you do that you have to write plus minus here, you have negative and positive over here, and then 25 is made by 5 times 5, right? So we're gonna have 5 here and another 5 here. Um remember a squared is 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 found by saying a times a. Same thing, uh the same line of reasoning that was applied, 25 is found by saying 5 times 5. Okay. We're going to separate this into two brackets where we're going to say 2x minus 5 is going to be equal to 0 or 2x plus 5 is going to be equal to 0 and then 2x is going to be equal to 5 and then we're going to divide by 2 on both sides because we want to get rid of the 2 and be left with only x so 2 will cancel and then x uh, is going to be 5 over 2 or we're going to have 2x is equal to negative 5 and you're going to divide both sides by 2 that means we're going to have x is equal to negative 5 over 2 that's how you would do this question or you could just simply write it as x is equal to plus minus 5 over 2 now let's go 1.1.2 on 1.1.2, given uh, a quadratic expression, I mean a quadratic equation, 5x is equal to 4. Here you have to make sure that you write everything such that it's equal to 0 by taking 4 to the left. So we, let's drop down 3x squared, drop down 5x as well, and then say minus 4. Now that we've subtracted 4 um, on both sides, we're going to end up with this expression. And... Another thing here that you have to take note of is this. When they say correct to two decimal places, it's usually because you are, you, you are required to use the quadratic formula because you cannot do this using um, the conventional way of saying bracket multiplied by bracket is equal to zero. So I hope you, t you took, you, you, you are seeing that as well. So you will instantly go on to say x, which is like two very two different type two uh, possible values of x. X is going to be equal to negative b plus minus b squared over two a c over two a. This is four a c. I mean, over two a. So what you do is you're going to say x is going to be equal to in the place of b. Remember the coefficient of x squared is a. Coefficient of x is always b and the constant that remains here is always c every time so negative is going to be outside and then the value of b is 5 so we're going to have negative 5 we are substituting on this equation so this is going to be negative 5 to the power 2 is positive 25 minus 4 a in the place of a we're going to put 3 because a is 3 
in the place of c we're going to put negative 4 because c is negative 4. remember when you are looking at a number you are also looking at the accompanying sign in this case the negative so you have to substitute it with the negative in the past i've seen people um, neglecting the negative ne neglecting the sign that comes with the number and a is equal to 3. Now, when you use your calculator, it will give you your uh, two possible answers instantly. But let's continue doing it. Let me just not cut it short. Let me do all of it. So this is going to be 4 times 4. It's going to be positive 16. 16 times 3, 16, 32, that's going to be 48. So, right, that's going to be 25 plus 48 over 6. And therefore, you can have two possible values. You can have x is equal to something, or x is equal to another thing. In this case, we're going to have x is equal to uh, negative 5 plus. We're going to use a positive, And then you're going to write that 25 plus 48 there and divide by 6. You will then use your calculator to find your answer here. Then you're going to do this calculation here. But now you're going to be using the negative. Negative. Because remember, it's a plus minus. So now the second answer will have a negative. You're going to have 25 plus 48 here. Divide by 6. This should also give you a value of x. So... I'm not going to write the value of x because I have no calculator with me. I'm going to leave this as it is. Um, it should be very like straightforward for someone who knows how to use a calculator. Now let's go to the next question. Okay, um, I've decided to use the calculator because so, uh, I might have to use maybe some of these values later on when I'm doing the, some of the questions. So the answer that I got here was 0 0.59 approximately. And then the answer that I got on for, for this question was negative 2.26. It's an approximate answer. So I have to make use of the signs that are relevant. Now um, let's go to the next question. The next question say is 1.1.3 and its exponents. Okay, um, on 1.1.3, we are given 2 to the power x minus 5 times by 2 to the power of x plus 1 is equal to negative 144. So in a question like this, you have to find a way to um, write this uh, everything here in the most basic form. So 12, 144 is equal to 12 to the power 2. And then let's drop down this. So usually, for example, um, here, you use a different color. So if, for example, here, we had something like 2 to the power x, 2 to the power 2x, like 2x, then we would know that this would require us to write it in a form such that we can treat it as a quadratic expression and use the k method. But because this is just 2 to the power x, that line of reasoning shouldn't be applicable. So let's consider another way of doing it. Another way of doing it would be to, to perform factorization. Okay, so let's see what happens when we perform factorization. On this side, we have 2 to the power x minus, on this side we have 2 to the power x, and then this is the same as 2 to the power x multiplied by 2 to the power 1. Now that's still equal to 2, 12 to the power of 2. And then on both sides, we have 2 to the power x. So we take out 2 to the power x. 2 to the power x goes there once. 2 to the power x goes there once and leaves 5 multiplied by 2 to the power 1, which is the same as 2, essentially. And that's going to be equal to 12 to the power 2. And I think we should use a bracket here to show that this is 12 to the power 2. 
And I'm writing it this way because I'm suspecting that maybe we might have to simplify, but then it's really not, not a problem even if you leave it as 144 here. Okay, let's continue. 1 minus, this is 5 times 2 is 10, so 1 minus for, uh, uh, 10 is equal to negative 9. So we're going to have 2 times negative 9 here. It's going to be equal to negative 12 to the power 2. And then we know that this is the same as, okay, let's divide with it first. Divide by negative 9 on both sides so that we're left with 2 to the power x. Now things are becoming simple. And then the negatives will then, of course, cancel each other out. And then we will be left with 12 to the power 2 over 9. 12 to the power 2 can be written as 4 times 3 to the power 2, where 4 times 3 is the inside part there. 12 is made by 4 times 3. And then everything is raised to the power of 2. And then 3, I mean 9, is the same as 3 times 3, or 3 to the power 2. See? So we, we might as well write this as, um, of, of course, 4, this 4 here, can be written as 2 to the power 2. So let's write this as 2 to the power 2 multiplied by 3 all to the power of 2 divided by 3 squared, because 9 is 3 squared. So this is going to be equal to 2 to the power of 2 times that 2 outside there is going to be 4. And then 2 times 1 times, because 3 has 1 on top, even though it's not written. So 1 times 2 is going to be 2. So this is going to be 3 over 2, 3 to the power 2, over 3 to the power 2. And then these will cancel each other out. Therefore, we'll be left with 2 right, to the power x is equal to 2 to the power of 4. As a result, because the bases are the same, exponents are equal. So x is equal to 4. And for you to test that uh, x is equal to 4, you can see um, here. You can see of here and here. And perform Here you just calculate should negative one of um negative one forty four. If you don't get negative one forty four, it simply means that you may have done something wrong and that you need to recheck uh your work. Okay, okay now let's do one point one point four. One point one point four. Here we have two x squared plus x minus 3 is greater than 0. So uh, this is a quadratic expression. So we have to find the factors. To find the factors, you know that 2x squared is made by 2x multiplied by x, and 3 is made by 3 multiplied by 1. So 2 times 2x times 1 is going to be 2x. 3 times x is going to be 3x. What can we do to these two numbers such that when we add them, they give us the term in the middle? We would need to put a negative on 2x. As a result, negative 2x plus 3 would, of course, give us x, which is exactly what we want. But then because we've put a negative on 2x, where does 2x come from? 2x comes from 2 times 2x times 1. comes from this one comes from this part here. So because there's a negative, we have to account for it by putting a negative next to 1. And then this becomes a bracket. And because we have a positive here, we have to account for it by putting a negative there. And then that becomes our second bracket. So as a result, we're going to have the first bracket, which is this one. We're going to have our first bracket, which is this one, 2x plus 3. And our second bracket, this one, which is x minus 1. Okay. And we also know that uh, 2x plus 3 is going to be equal to 2x is equal to negative 3 divided by 2 divided by 2. x is going to be equal to negative 3 over 2. And we also know that x minus 1 is going to be equal to as well. So x is going to be equal to positive 1. I hope 
people are following this part. If you don't follow this part, it means that you still need to practice a lot of factorization because you have to equate 2x plus 3 to 0 and also x minus 1 to 0 in order to do this. Okay, so now that we know our factors, let's make a drawing. You need a drawing in order to answer this question. Like you need to sketch because if you don't, then you won't be able to answer the question. X is equal to 1 should be on this side because it's positive and X is equal to negative 2 or 2 should be on this side because it's negative. That's how numbers are on the, um, on the uh, number line. And because this expression, let me indicate it, and because this expression is greater than 0, we are interested in the parts where it is above the thingy, um, above the x-axis. This is the x-axis. So it should be above this. And remember, 2x squared plus x minus 3 resembles a positive um, or a, a, a parabola that's, that looks like this. And because it's greater than 0, as I've shown, it's above the x-axis. The only parts that we're going to be interested on are these ones. Let me show them with the color, a different color. These are the parts we are interested in. Why? Because they are they are above, like they are above the x-axis. They are positive. They are greater than zero. And now, how do we change it um, in an algebraic way? It's simple. So what we will need to do is to say x. For this, for this part here, x should is going to be starting here, and, and because we should make sure that because there is no there is a great, greater than greater than sign, but there is no equality below it. So, so we're going to have an open um, point here, and an open point here as well. So x will start here and go to negative infinity, and x will also start from this side and go to positive infinity because that's where the body of the graph is above zero. So our answer will be x should be less than negative 3 over 2. And on this side, x should be greater than 1. So that's the solution. I'm going to put an or there. That's how you write this, this uh, uh, question. Another notation that you can use is the one that's like this. Negative 3 over 2 and negative infinity. And then you say or or is represented by this 1 and positive infinity take note of the fact that I'm using these types of brackets here to show that 1 is not included and that negative 3 over 2 is also not included if there was a sign like this I would then use this kind of bracket but because there is a sign that looks like this I use this kind of bracket I hope that makes sense let's go to the next question Okay, now let's read um, 1.2. We're given um, i, uh, which is 1, and then the second one, which is 2. Okay, on 1.2.1, we are asked to show that the equation above, the first equation above is y is equal to negative x minus 2. So let's write it down first. Let's write the, the question. So we have um, i as 4 to the power x plus 2, multiplied by 8 to the power of y, this is 2 here, plus 1 is equal to 2 to the power of 1 minus uh, x. So in this question, because um, if, we, if we look at 1.2.1, we are asked to show that y is equal to negative 2, I mean negative x minus 2. And it's clear that we have to manipulate the exponents because that's where we will find the y value and that's where we will find the x values. You see, these are the x values. So we should try to find a way to write um, the bases such that they are all the same so that we can then equate the exponents. So the lowest uh, base here we have is base uh, number 2. So we should write all the others uh, as 2 to the power something so that we can then equate the exponents and try to find y is equal to negative x minus 2. So 4 is the same as 2 to the power 2. And then, of course, we have x plus 2 next to it. And then times 
8 is the same as 2 to the power 3 multiplied by y plus 1. And of course, we're going to just drop this one as it is because it's already in its simplest form. Now, because the bases are the same, 2 and 2 are the same, we add the exponents. So we'll end up with 2 to the power of 2x plus 2 plus 3y plus 1. We are adding the exponents of the respective bases. And that's going to be equal to 1 minus x, which is dropped as it is. And then, because the bases now are the same, we can then equate the exponents. As a result, we're going to have 2 to the power x plus 2 plus 3 multiplied by 1. The y plus 1 is equal to 1 minus x. And then we're just going to multiply out everything. This is going to be 2 multiplied by x, 2x, 2 multiplied by 2, 4. 3 multiplied by y is 3y. 3 multiplied by 1 is 3. That's going to be 1 minus x. And then we're going to have to take the x values to the left because on this solution they are on the left. And then we're going to have to, to have y values on the right because on this solution they are on the right. So we drop 3y as it is. And then we drop 1 minus x as it is as well. But then we take 2x to the left, it becomes negative there. We take 4 plus 3, 4 plus 3 is 7. So we take 7, that is positive, becomes negative when it comes to the side. All right. So, okay, um, so we will have 3y is equal to 1 minus 7 is negative 6, and negative x minus 2x is negative 3x, so negative 3x minus 6. But because we want y, we're going to divide on both sides by 3, divide by 3, 3 cancels y is going to be equal to negative 3x over 3 minus 6 over 3. We have to distribute that 3 um, between the two um, terms. At the end of the day, we're going to end up having negative x here because trees are cancelling each other out. 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 6 twice, and then the negative sign is carried over as well. So we have that. So that's how you would do this question. Now, let's try to see if we can solve for x and y simultaneously given this information and i have to uh i have to also emphasize that the the answer you get on the first question that's asked is usually used to solve the question that follows um the, the, the question that you've just finished so when you're solving for x and y simultaneously you don't have to go back to writing uh, out this expression here the equivalence of this expression is this one. It's y is equal to negative x minus 2. So you're going to be using y is equal to negative x minus 2 to solve this question. So in other words, in your i, you're going to have y is equal to negative x minus 2. And then in your number 2, you're going to have this expression as it is. And it's going to be very easy to solve for x. So let's try to do that. Okay. So I've rewritten everything here. So one uh, on the first, the first equation now is y is equal to negative x minus two, and of course I said that you shouldn't write it this way, because it would make things hard. But I use this equivalent expression or equation. I mean, um, so here what you need to do is to use the easier of the two equations. The easiest equation here is the, is this one. So we're gonna call it. Let's call it equation A, and then this one should be called equation B. So what we do is we substitute y of equation A, y of equation A, to equation B. That's what we're going to do. Okay, so um, we're going to write equation 2 as it is, but in the place of y, we're going to put this negative x minus 2 because it's called negative x minus 2 of course so negative x minus 2 to the power 2 plus x in the place of y again we're going to put negative x minus 2 that's going to be equal to 7 note that this equation is this one 
substituting y of a into b. So let's just uh, expand it. And then this one will become this. Let me just do this small calculation on the side first. Negative times uh, negative x times negative x is positive x squared. Negative x times negative 2 is positive 2x. Negative x, 2x multiplied by negative x is positive 2x. And negative 2 multiplied by negative 2 is positive 4. So as a result, this expression here um, will give us x squared plus 4x plus 4. And then we're going to multiply out times negative x is negative x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. And then 7 is going to be taken to the left, going to become negative 7, and then that's all going to be equal to 0. Don't mind this. This was me just performing a calculation on the side. This is not part of the work that we're doing. We, okay, let's continue. So um, x squared and this x squared will cancel each other out. And then we're going to drop that x squared there. x squared plus 4x and minus 2x are going to give us 2x. So 4x minus 2x is 2x. And then 4 minus 7 is going to give us negative 3. And that's going to be equal to 0. And then we're going to factorize this. We know that x squared is made by x times x. 3 is made by 3 times 1. x times 1 is x. 3 times x is 3x. What can we do here to x and 3x so that they give us 2x? You just put a negative in front of x there, such that negative x plus 3x is going to give us 2x. So the negative can should be accounted for, and the negative is supposed to be here, because negative x comes from x times 1. And this one, of course, is going to be positive, so we're going to end up with x plus 3 and x minus 1. Therefore, our answer will be x is equal to negative 3, or x is equal to positive 1. Now we have two y values, two possible y values, because we have two um, possible x values. Okay, for x is equal to negative 3, we're going to have to substitute back to one of the two equations, a or b. But then I would suggest that we use a because it's the easiest equation here. And that's what you should do as well. It saves you time. So let's substitute on a. In the place of x, we put negative 3. Note that I had a negative in front of x already. And then in the place of the actual x, there's a negative 3 as well there. So pay careful attention on that. Uh, negative times negative 3 is positive 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. And then for x is equal to 1, we're going to use the same equation. I'm going to put 1 there minus 2, negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. So these are the values that you would find. You would find x is equal to negative 1, which would give you y is equal to 1, and x is equal to 1, which would give you y is equal to negative 3. A combination of these, when substituted to these equations, will satisfy both of them. In the sense that if you put x is equal to negative 3 in this equation here, for example, if you put x is equal to negative 3 here, this is negative um, I mean, if you put x is equal to negative 3 in this equation, it's going to give you 1. And if you put the same uh, values in this equation, uh, in the place of x, you put your um, 1. And then in the place of uh, x, uh, you put negative 3. You're going to get 7 as your answer. Okay, let's go to the next question. Now, 1.3 is asking us to prove... 1.3 is asking us to prove that... The given equation has rational roots for all rational values of g. So for you to prove that this has rational roots, you have to use the delta method or the delta expression, whichever way you want to call it. As long as you know how to do it, that's, that's the most important thing. So let's write this down first. Is equal to 0. Okay. So when you're given an expression like this, 
you have to write it in this general form ax squared plus bx plus c. The reason you're writing it in this form is because you want to be able to extract b squared minus 4ac from it. And b squared minus 4ac will then be used, because it's a delta, will then be used to test if whether their roots are real, unreal, equal, unequal, rational, irrational. Yeah, well, so that's how that, that's why you would do um, this thingy. You have to write the whole thingy in this form. Okay, so now let's try to write this one in this form. We already have 6x squared here, which is a good thing for us. This is already our a. 6 is already our a here. Okay, so 6 is already our a. Okay, now we're going to have 6 squared. And then we can find a way to write bx by taking out 2, I mean by taking out x, x outside. And then when x goes to 2gx, it leaves 2g. And when x goes to 5x, it leaves 5. And then we're going to drop down g and then that's also equal to zero and then now that we have this expression we can see that clearly this is a this is b and this is c you see it is in this form now that we have this form let's try to find our delta our delta is b squared minus 4ac In the place of b, we have 2g minus 5 minus 4 multiplied by a. In the place of a, we have 6. In the place of c, we have g. For us to prove that this uh, equation has rational roots, our delta, our delta, let me write it here, our delta has to be equal to a perfect square. Perfect squares are positive, by the way. Like it has to be equal to something like four to four twenty-five thirty-six. It's all those numbers that can be written that that, that have um square roots. For example, four can be written as two times two. Twenty-five can be written as five times five. So that's what you that's what you need here. You need to find something like this as your answer. Okay. So. Uh, if we multiply out this, we're going to have something like this, 2g minus 5. When we expand it first, I mean. So 2g multiplied by 2g is going to be 4g squared. 2g multiplied by 5 is going to be negative 10g. And negative 5g multiplied by 2 is going to be negative 10g again. And negative 5 multiplied by negative 5 is going to be positive 10. And then now, on this side, we have negative 4 times 6, which is 4, 8, uh, 6, 12, it's 24, and then 24g, and then the negative and negative will give us a positive, so it's 24g here. So 4g plus 24g is equal to 28g. 28g, let me write, no, 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 let's drop 4g squared here. 10g, negative 10g minus 10g is going to be negative 20g plus 10. Oh, there's also another. There's also 24g here. So negative 20g plus 24g is going to give us positive 4g. So let's drop down our 4g squared. My pen is giving me some problems here. Then let's drop 10. And then negative 20g plus 24g is positive 4g. If you look at this expression, you can try to test and see if whether it is a perfect square by substituting a rational value on g. 
for example, you can substitute 4 on G, 4 here and 4 here. Let's try to do that. So if we put, let's uh, say, um, 4 here, that's going to be 16. 16 times 4 is going to be 64. And then that's going to be plus 10. And then the place here, in, in this place, they will, let's put 4 again. 4 times 4 is going to be equal to 16. Okay, I'm realizing that I actually made a very small mistake here. In this place, we are supposed to have 3. This is 3. This is 3. Because that's 3 there in, one, in the question. Okay, let's continue. Um, sorry about that. So, we have to show that this is equal to something like 25, 64, 125, 121, or any other number that is um, a perfect square. So, this is going to be equal to b squared minus 4ac. So, knowing that, we can then substitute the value of b. Value of b is 2g minus 3 to the power 2 minus 4 multiplied by a. a is equal to 6. Multiplied by c. c is negative g. Take note of the fact that I take g with its sign. If you don't take g with, with its sign, you're going to get the wrong answer. So, 2g minus 3 is going to give us 4g squared. And then 2g multiplied by negative 3 is going to be negative 6g. Negative 6g will give us negative 12g. This will give us um, negative 12g. And then negative 6 times, uh, negative 4 times 6 times negative g is going to be equal to positive 24g. And then remember, here, negative 3 times 3 is going to be positive 9, so I forgot to put a positive 9 here. Yeah, there's a positive 9 here in this place. Okay, so as a result, we'll end up having 4g squared, and then plus that positive 9, and then negative 12g and positive 12g will, positive 24g will give us positive 12g. Now, we want our answer to be something like 4 or 16, like 25, all these numbers that are perfect squares, numbers where you can find two identical numbers that when multiplied will give you the number that you're looking for. But for us to do that, we have to substitute the values of g. And in the question, it says we this is only valid for all rational values of g. So this means that even the values of g have to be rational as well. So we're going to choose a rational value. Let's choose 4. It's the smallest. It's going to make things easy. So if we could choose to substitute 4 here, you don't have to show this step. You can end here. But to show you that this makes sense, you can just substitute the value of 4 here because 4 is also a rational uh, value. And plus 9 plus 4 in fact, when they say um, for all rational values of g, they're just talking about rational numbers, not necessarily a number that uh, would then form a rational group because of its delta. Okay, so let's put a 4 here again. 4 squared is equal to 16. 16 times 4 is 64. And then plus 9. 12 times 4 is 2448, right? And then 48 plus 64 is going to give us 112. 112 plus 9 is going to give us 121. And 121 is a perfect square because it can be written as 21, I mean 11 times 11. And therefore, delta, delta is rational. I don't know what's happening with my ink. So delta is rational, and therefore, the equation has rational roots. That's how you would do this question. I hope you find this informative, and um, make sure to leave comments with regards to things that you may have missed or did not understand. I'll try to explain all of them, and don't forget to share the 
video with friends and also encourage them to subscribe subscribe as well thank you